Blade the Series Review. Krista comes back from serving a tour of duty only to find her family hit bad by the loss of her brother. Being the inquisitive sort and wanting to set things right, she tries to find out what happened to, his, to her brother. She soon comes across vampires and only narrowly escapes death because Blade rescues her. He explains that he's a sort of half-vampire and he's out there hunting vampires and that her brother died because of vampires. She agrees to work for him, but she's bitten. And there we have the setup. We have a character that doesn't know this world yet, just as we in the audience don't, so there's someone to explain it to and someone to experience along with us for the first time. And she's been bitten, so will she turn? Will she agree to become a vampire? Or will she insist on staying a human? Remember, this character has not yet lost very much, at least at the hands of vampires, so we have this sort of ambiguity. And the show does deal with that somewhat. I think it was supposed to be more for future seasons that they would really dig into that. The show only did get one season, so it's of course, if you don't want to get into a show that doesn't have a future, that this is not for you. It also only has 12 episodes and a decent enough season finale. It definitely doesn't work as a series finale. It very much sets up another season. The characters are pretty good. Blade has a new helper, a young Asian man, and it's a little unclear when exactly this is taking place as far as the movies go, but it definitely does refer to some stuff from the first, or has some connection to the first one. I'm not sure that, you know, Blade 2 and Trinity happened in this series continuity. Blade is now played by the rapper Sticky Fingers, and he is not Wesley Snipes. He does put effort into it, and he gets the badassery, and to an extent the self-hatred, pretty well down. His acting ranges some back and forth over the course of the season. We also have a completely new mythology to the... It's sort of also following on that of the first, with you know, Pure Bloods running the show for the vampire world. And we have a bit of a social climber in Marcus Van Skyver. There are houses now and we really do get a sense of a real you know ladder of ranks of vampires because it's a show, it's a series, there's more time than the movies we get more into this world where you know unlike the movies that have very limited time and have to deliver a climax within the two hours. The storylines usually are pretty interesting. They're not always that compellingly closed off, you know. They don't all come to a really good conclusion, but they do tend to be interesting and the show is nicely fast-paced. There's a qu quite good amount of action, and the choreography is not bad, although it definitely not, is not on the level of the movies, especially the first two. The, the action is, you know, martial arts, sword fighting, shootings. One thing to note is that Blade is now presented as, I understand he also is in the comics, as being as strong as a vampire, not stronger. In the movies, he's stronger. He just 
tears through him like a hot knife through butter, whereas here it's more like he's as good as one vampire. So when he takes on several, it can actually be, you know, a fight. So we feel more risk. There's more threat of the character of Blade actually dying. The dialogue is pretty good, usually, not too excessive. There's some really memorable characters, other than the good guys and Marcus Van Skyver. Marcus also has a sort of right-hand chick, Chase, a very pale, young, very seductive vampiress, who's not only quite attractive, she's also a true threat. She is really, really dangerous and not entirely stable. The the costumes are pretty well done. The effects also the show is was on Spike, so for the, for my American viewers, you already know what that means. A lot of sex. It does actually get you know bloody and violent and gory. You know they don't hold back that much, and you know they actually inject more sex than there would you know naturally be in this sort of thing necessarily. David S. Goyer had a hand in writing this, so you, it does feel like it, especially with the first movie, there is a sort of you know, natural connection. If you watch the first movie and then watch the show, you can really tell. And not only because a lot of the dialogue and setup in the pilot episode is straight out of the movie, literally. I, I believe Blade even repeats the line, the world you live in is just a sugar-coated topping, or, or just has a sugar, whatever, you know what I mean. All in all, it's quite enjoyable if you like the character and you want more mythology for him, and you know, you want some themes explored about vampirism. One thing that this also gets into is that apparently the ash of vampires is a potent narcotic. So there's some drug dealing kind of thing with that also, you know. It, it really is that kind of gritty, it's that environment, you know. The soundtrack is a lot of rap and it fits perfectly, you know, it really sets the mood for this. So yeah, I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.